All right, match four. Um. Uh, let's keep. Right, so it's risky, but we do have light up the stage and a decent chance to draw more mountains naturally. Yeah, let's play Soul Scar. I wonder if this is a living end. There's not that many decks that play Copperline Gorge. It could be a Gruel Burn or a... Nope, it's definitely a living end. I'd say the odds are like 90% or more likely that if you see Copperline Gorge, it's a living end. Well, if we hit uh, mana, then uh, I think we're in decent shape. Depending on their lands, Blood Moon might get them too. Okay. I I wonder maybe do is it us that's maybe playing too fast? Like do we like not take our time enough to consider all our options, I wonder. Cause sometimes it just feels like our opponents take a long time to uh make their decisions. And I know what some people are thinking, like her, 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 while well, you're playing a red deck, of course of course the decisions are pretty straightforward. I don't think they really are. Um but definitely part of it is also we've just played we just we're very familiar with Living End, so for the most part. So like maybe that's what it parts of what it is too. Our opponents are never as familiar with our deck as we are with theirs. Uh, okay. A very, very early living end. Well, the problem is, is uh, we don't have, um, they didn't take any damage, but, but the good news is, though, is we can whittle these down. Uh, once again, I want to take a long time to make the decision. Um, you know, considering we're almost certainly going to want to drop Abbott next turn, I think, I think we, uh, I think the plan is, is we're going to drop, we're going to drop Swiss Spear and we're going to Lava Dart one of these things. Probably. Probably this, because ideally we want to get to the point where this uh, will attack into one of our creatures and we'll just eat it up. We could actually race that, I don't think about it. Oh, we should have played Blood Moon, actually, and I think about it. I don't know. We're also trying to race. Um, I'll wait till next turn. Yeah, I should have played Blood Moon, because, uh, <clears throat> if they sweep the board again, <clears throat> then we're kind of in trouble. Yeah, I might have punted by not playing Blood Moon there. We were really kind of uh, getting tunnel vision, though, with the, the racing. And I think we would successfully race, but but um, they have a bigger board in the grave. Um... Let's block, and I'll to explain the reason why. We want to. We want more creatures on the back end. 
when uh, when they living end. But we do want to force them to living end though at the same time. Yeah, so we'll do it. Well, yeah, we'll do it like this because realistically, we're not gonna we're not gonna win with creatures anyway if we can somehow win post post second living end. But this way, um, this way at least we get to uh, hopefully play something off of Abbott. Okay, so this is the plan. We're going to Lava Dart. We're going to light up the stage. This is probably going to prompt a living end before this connects. They're dead if they if this connects, so yeah. Where'd our Abbott go? Oh. Oh, I guess we already played a land. Mm, that would have been a good reason not to play a land. But it kind of doesn't matter, I don't think. Can we survive? Potentially, yes, actually. Against all odds. Um, man, I really wish I could have played that land, though. But the problem is, is uh, I don't see us cobbling together enough burn spells. <clears throat> yeah, I think we threw that game away with the uh, Blood Moon. But uh, Relic helps out a lot. Blood Moon still could potentially get him. Flame Slash is not good because it only really works after the uh, Living End. And I don't think the rest of these cards really do much. Yeah, let's run it back. Yeah, I think the Blood Moon would have uh, would have put them in a tough spot. Oh, well, we can't. Well, we can't. Uh... Well, hey. <laughs> See, I could have spent like two minutes, you know deciding whether or not to mulligan each of those hands, but, you know, um, I think, I don't know, I don't know if we just play really quick, or, you know, we should be slowing down a bit or something, or I don't know, that, that, that took like, that took like less than a minute to figure all that out. <sighs> Alright, well, we couldn't try to max damage, but what I'd rather do is I'd rather light up into another prowess creature or into a relic man we'd be able to jam like two leagues in the time of one if um if our opponents uh played a little faster but hey what can you do I hope we don't reveal two lands okay good 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 I checked my one of the better cards I could have played there. <clears throat> mm. Man, I think we got to jam Blood Moon this time. We got to learn from our mistake from last time. I know, I know, we lose to Spear and Lava Dark, but like the potential to just lock them out of the game is it's too alluring.
Do we want to show them Relic? I'm sure they have to know we've got it. Probably going to just eat an ignit truer, but... <clears throat> but, eh. Yeah, they know we've got it. They drew their basic swamp, which means they can play a dread something. Attacking is a bit of a risky proposition for them there. Desert Ceridon? No. Horror of the... Um... We could attack, but I don't really see the point. If they, I, we're probably going to deter an attack with Soul Scar because if we have like a lightning bolt, um, or even we can just use this lava dart to kill this horror. Okay, that's gutsy. Well, let's block the uh, Simeon lava dart. This and hopefully all's well. Oh yeah, I guess they got combat tricks. So, but anyway, with their one lightning bolt, or almost any other burn spell away. Uh, I can't quite justify. Unless we can whittle this down a lot. Keep uh, whittling down their graveyard. Question is, if we draw a land, do we want a Firebolt or do we want to? Oh, we're definitely playing Gigantha. Um, we may need to cycle this. I mean, because uh, yeah, the Desert Ceridon's a little too menacing. All right, yeah. So hopefully they can't string together enough cards off the horror of the broken lands. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's try to whittle this down and see where that goes. I guess I do need to attack eventually, right? Yeah, so if they attack, then I will, uh, actually I might just, I might just try to race if they attack, man, but, but they can still dish out a lot of damage. So what we, we could do if they attack is I could block and lightning bolt. If they've got a, um, if they got another living end, that's bad, but they, you know, two cyclers and I'm basically dead. Yeah, two cyclers and I am dead, so we gotta, 
Gotta try to stay alive. Alright, well, that was a that was a good result. Oh yeah, I forgot we can't cycle that. And at least if they living end, at least we get Gigantha back. But <laughs> they get way more back than we do. But, you know, still. Hopefully they got a Violent Outburst as their dredger instead. Well, let's play this just for um, just for prowess triggers. Well, let's see, this is GG. Nice. All right, we pulled that one out. That was that one was not a sure thing at all. And I think that was in large part thanks to uh, just um, just you know having the discipline to to re recognize that Blood Moon was the objectively more powerful play than just trying to play our um, our spells. We should have we should have uh, recognized that in game one, but thankfully we learned from our mistake and uh, recognized that in game two. Okay, well, one of these is going to get Ignat Chewered, but the other one will hopefully stick. There could be some consideration to waiting until turn two to get full value. There's definitely a lot of consideration to that. Mulligan into six cards. Nice. We'll take it. Um... Problem is, is if they do a lot of cycling next turn, and then just living end, we're in a world of hurt. Um, so I think for that reason we have to, because uh, you know they could uh, they could play um, semi they do play four semi spirit guides. There's a lot of consideration to waiting until turn two, but uh, but um, okay, well it looks like they don't have any sure. I guess they don't always have it, you know, if you think about it. So they might just be going for playing their, um, playing their, uh, uh, their cyclers instead of, um, you know, because they might just be adjudging that, uh, the graveyard strategy is not going to work. We could cycle our relic uh, preemptively if it looks like that. Uh, as much as we'd love to put Gigantha in hand, we have to at least hold one mana up for uh, a Cracking Relic. And it does look like they're on. They play out the uh, Cycler's plan. Well, we'll uh, put Gigantha in hand preemptively. I think they pro yeah, they probably want to finally start cracking these. They might also be trying to overload the uh, the relics by uh, cycling a bunch of cards and then like double living end. I don't know. Or or they might be they might have like a bunch of yeah, they might try to like do a mini a mini living end and then uh, have like a bunch of cyclers in hand and then like cycle a bunch in response to me cracking relic. They might have switched plans. <clears throat> if so, our best strategy is probably to just let the mini living end resolve instead of falling for their trap. goodness okay well the problem is this is not exactly looking like a mini living end that's the problem
Who will be eminently dealable with uh, burn spells? We have we have enough burn in hand to cleanly deal with both. So we may want to uh, just let it resolve if they go. Because the worry, of course, is like cycling like three street wraiths street and uh, and another desert or something. All right, well that's that's a heck of a lot less menacing. I'm not even sure we want to really. I'm not even sure we want to uh, bolt that, to be honest. We might double lava dart it though. We can do that at the end of turn. Problem with double bolt lava darting though is we don't want to. Is we don't want to <coughs> have to exile these with the relics. Makes it easy. We'll hold and dart that. Yeah, you know what? We'll uh, and then we'll just play out the Giganta. Yeah, wh whoever thinks Giganta is worthless, I mean, like, wh wh you know, what we do with that Giganta here is just a free beat stick that we didn't, you know, that was we didn't even have to like draw into. It was just there. We just nabbed it and. And suddenly, suddenly, uh, we can put the pressure on them. Like, w w why do people think Gigant is useless? I don't get it. Uh, I don't know what this means, but I'm gonna, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm gonna assume my opponent isn't, in, isn't an idiot, and that they have, God knows what. Maybe I give our opponents too much credit, but we don't want to be we don't be those guys that just like um that just like fall right into our traps, you know. <clears throat> actually, but we do know self self seek Actually, we know that this is a this is a top player. So, um, but they might know we know that, and you know. And we might know they might know that we are liable to give them credit, so there's that too. Hmm. I think the amount of uh, damage that can be done from a living end is fairly limited here, so let's just bolt that. If they want a living end, a simian spirit guide back, be my guest. They might have like a street wraith. And a Simeon Spirit Guide. In which case, also be my guest. Or, actually, I guess they got four mana, so they might have like a Desert Ceridon. And, and a Living End. Also be my guest. I guess, I guess, actually, yeah, I forgot, we lose our Giganta, too. But they lose one of their Simeon Spirit Guides. All, all in all, it's really not that, it's really not that bad for us. I was actually more worried about, like, a Desert Sheridan or something coming out there. Well... Man, the problem is they, they've got all the mana they need. I wonder if any of their creatures cost double black. I think they do. Well, let's hope they can't. Uh, let's hope they can't punish this. But I do want to land the Blood Moon because I, I, even though they got all their colors, I think cutting them off of double, double color is definitely something worth considering. Um. I don't see like a ton of downside here, especially since there's a good chance we're gonna want to flash. We're gonna want to flash this back before we sack a relic anyway. Hmm. 
All right, I'm going for the, uh, put the pressure on. Unfortunately, this can't be cycled anymore, so there is that. We'll wait one more turn on the Firebolt. You know, just in case they present some type of threat or something. Plus, you never know, we might draw like a Swift Spear. Okay. Well, that's... Pr uh, yeah, well, you know what we might do next turn? We might Firebolt and Flashback Lava Dart on that. I'm not too worried about taking the damage. I'd rather deal more damage to them, to be honest. We could have played the Blood Moon, but I mean, probably should have, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, see, and that that's that's a card we cut them off with Blood Moon, double black. I knew, I remember they played one of those, and boy, that's a doozy. That would be a uh, tough for us if that came into play. All right, good thing we actually held on to Blood Moon. Let's wait till next turn so we can get max value off of the uh, prowess triggers. And then I think we've got lethal actually. Alright, alright. Okay. So let's lose our uh, firebolt. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. going to play another Relic. going to play Lightning Bolt. And we're going to play Blood Moon. And we're going to attack for 9. And we're just going to... Okay. Alright, sweet. 